following podcast will contain spoilers and explicit language. Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Yeah, It's That Bad. My name is Joel. And I'm Martin. This is the show that looks at supposedly bad movies and asks the question, is it really that bad? Well, what that boils down to is that we look at movies that are rotten on Rotten Tomatoes and we reevaluate that score. Does it really deserve to be so low? Tonight's movie is 2008's Twilight, directed by Catherine Hardwick, starring Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson. Twilight is a romantic vampire film based on the Stephanie Meyer novels of the same name. This movie currently holds a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Let me get a quick plot synopsis. Bella Swan was not expecting anything out of the ordinary to happen when she moved to live with her dad in Forks, Washington. But this is where her life truly begins. There, she meets Edward Cullen, a mysterious and captivating student at her new high school. Bella soon discovers that Edward is hiding a secret after he impossibly saves her life from a van with his superhuman strength and speed. She is determined to unravel his secret, but the truth is more terrifying than she realized. Edward is a vampire. Any normal person would just keep away from him, but Edward and Bella have fallen passionately and unconditionally in love with each other, and so begins their forbidden relationship between a human and a vampire. But the young lovers soon discover that their troubles are only just about to begin. Okay, Martin, what did you think of Twilight? All right, I just want to preface this with a little tidbit of info about me personally. I really like vampires. I find them fascinating, and I really think they're more entertaining than the average person. That being said, I really didn't like this movie. <laughs> okay, so that I, I think that that goes... I think that speaks volumes about this movie. Okay, well, I personally have a much different history than you. I know that you have Twilight in your blood. Like, you've, <laughs> you've seen all the movies. In, in the theater, I've gone opening night to all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and as a 26-year-old man, <laughs> I'm glad nobody out there knows my actual identity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, you're, you're a Twilight fanatic. You're in the closet, you know. You're twihard. I, I'm never coming out, man. Yeah. As for me, my only exposure to Twilight is seeing girls on the subway reading Twilight. I saw the second movie. My girlfriend put a gun in my head and she's like, you, you're seeing this. There's nothing you can do to get out of it. You're coming. So that's pretty much all the exposure I have. I skipped the first one. I went to the second one. I don't know. I thought I'd live the rest of my life and never have to do any Twilight related things. And yet here we yet are. Yet here we are. But I want to make myself perfectly clear. I did not go into this review wanting to gun this movie down. Down. I wanted to have an open mind. I really, truly did. Please believe me. I really did. I know how this is going to come off when it's finally listened to. It's going to come off as two guys and, you know, we're, we're two guys in our mid to late 20s. This movie is not in our demographic not even close. Not at all. This is like the complete opposite end of the spectrum as far as movie demographics go. So, I mean, just right out of the gate. <laughs> I'm expecting a lot of emails. In fact, I hope there are a lot of emails. Send them. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, so Kristen Stewart is Bella and Robert Pattinson is uh, Edward. Before we actually dive into the nuts and bolts, I want to kind of dissect these two characters. Both the characters and the actors and how they portray them. Okay. Yeah, sure. So let, let's begin with Bella. A lot has been said about Bella, mostly that essentially Bella is Stephanie Meyer, the writer of the book. Have you heard this theory? I've heard this theory and uh, I've seen this movie more than once. Each time I view it, it becomes more and more obvious how much of her own personal life or fantasy of what she wanted her life to be goes into this character. Well, that's perfect. That's just perfect because in literature... There exists a character personality type called a Mary Sue. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's supposed to be an uh, idealized version of the author projected into a story. Yep, it's an over-idealized uh, character lacking noteworthy flaws and primarily functioning as a wish-fulfillment fantasy for the author or reader. But that also takes away dun, 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 character development. Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem, and it's something that people that write fan fiction... <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Dragon Ball Z fan fiction, they're they're prone to do like they'll they'll make themselves as strong as as fast as like the main character, just so they can keep up. So I have a list here of ten traits of a Mary Sue. Let's see if we can diagnose Bella. Is she a Mary Sue? We'll go through these really quickly, okay? Number one, she is stunningly or unusually beautiful. What do you think? She's the most attractive girl in the entire high school. 
In fact, you know, Bella Swan. She's the beautiful Be- swan. Beautiful swan. Yeah. You know, so right off the bat, it's like she comes to school. She's the new, the new kid in class, right? She, she comes into the school, by the way, in March. Middle of the, uh, I can't say semester. Yeah, the school year is already rolling. The school year is, the, the school year is almost over. Yeah. <laughs> right? School, uh, high school goes till June, right? And automatically, everyone's like, hey, you're, I wanna, uh, you're my friend. Let's be friends. BFF. And all the guys are like, I have to get in bed with you. All right, number two. She has multiple special skills or abilities. Edward in this movie has the ability to read people's minds. Yet for some reason, that rule is completely shattered because he can't read Bella's mind. Why? She's know. special. Okay. I-, I wrote that down too. She's I'm a like, robot I- actress. I can't read you. Edward says that a couple of times. I just can't read you. Well, neither could I. I couldn't read her emotions either. Like she's just stone-faced the whole time. Number three. Going hand in hand with the above, she is always being uber heroic, rescuing random people and saving the day. In the opening monologue, doesn't she say something about like She says something like this would be a good way to die, to be, die for, for someone, someone else, I, for someone right? else. She's sacrificing herself. There you go. That's it. That's all so, I, that, I guess yeah, she's being a martyr. Number 4, she's kind and virtuous and has no big character flaws of any kind. And no, clumsiness and or a feisty temper do not count. They're far too generic and only serve to make her look cute. Now, Bella does have a character flaw. She's clumsy. Remember, like, she slipped and fell on the ice? Yes. Oh, how cute, right? Yeah, it made her cute and, I guess, look defenselessly feminine. And I'm trying to say that as in a, (laughs) as in a, uh, the most unsexist way possible. But this movie makes it that I can't do that. We are absolutely going to discuss that. Right after this, it makes it makes it so that it's impossible for me not to sound sexist when I discuss this movie. <laughs> I just I just want to put that out there right now. Okay, number six. All the good characters in the story just seem to be naturally drawn to her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every it, single male it, in the high school, right off the bat, right away, they're like, whoa. she doesn't she, she doesn't even introduce her name. It's like, whoa, they already so they hot. already know her name, and I don't know how they how do they know her name. Number seven, sometimes there is a prophecy or a legend about her. I don't know if that applies. I don't think that this applies. No. Okay, number eight, she is portrayed as being cooler or more mature or more important or powerful than everyone else in the story. She is totally above she is the way generic, above. way above the generic high school drama. <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. I am way more mature yeah, she than just, they she are. She just lays there. She rolls her eyes. She's like... <sighs> you know. What a bunch of immature kids. Yeah, that, that's her attitude the whole time. Number nine, she often has a tragic, angsty, mysterious past. Didn't her mother just get divorced or something? And Yeah, and just dumped her. Yeah, just ditched her, right? She's like, listen, babe, we're going to Miami, so get the fuck out of the house and go to Washington State, I guess, in the middle of your senior year of high school. And number ten, finally, she is so darn perfect and two-dimensional that it is annoying and boring. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'm glad you bring that up. That's the perfect way to end this thing. So what do you think? Undeniably, they could have just drew a picture of a girl on a piece of paper and just danced it around on a popsicle stick. Yeah, I would have <laughs> got the same impression of her acting. Yeah, you know, she was pretty... The, the Bella character really is one-dimensional. Like, I can't deny. And it this is like... Like, we were talking about this before. This is the female equivalent of Sam Worthington in Avatar and Garrett Hedlund in Tron Legacy. These boring, flat, two-dimensional characters that a lot, that don't have any outstanding personality traits. So anybody who's viewing this thing can very easily project themselves into the character. Which is what, I guess, draws women to this because that's what they would enjoy. This is a good wish fulfillment fantasy for them? I, f- I think it is. But that also raises the question, are we allowed to judge her acting merit on this character? For all we know, she could be a phenomenal actress and they're like, hey, hey, tone it down. No emotion. You know, that's a really good point. You know, supposedly that's what happened to Chris, um, to Hayden Christensen on the Star Wars movies. Like he would go up to George Lucas and be like, why is this so stiff? And George Lucas would tell him, all right, enough. You read it like I wrote it. George Lucas fucking sucks, man. Well, well, maybe that's the same situation with this. Like, you know, I've got a friend that, like, loves Kristen Stewart, and he's probably going to, like, put a bullet in my head after he hears this episode, but... Uh, one of the tools? Yeah, one of my friends, he, he loves her. He thinks she's, like, the one of the, the best of the best. So, you know, I'm still not sold on Kristen Stewart, you know? I don't, I don't want to bash her too much, but I thought she was pretty one-dimensional in this. You know what? 
even though I said that I can't, it raises the question that I can't accurately bash her acting in this movie because she might have been told to tone it down. The scene where she fights her father was pretty emotionally packed, and she did not deliver she the fell, goods. She fell flat. She fell really flat. You know, a lot has been said about the, this Bella character, that she's a bad influence on girls. What do you think about that? I don't know about influence, but role model, for yeah, sure. Yeah, role, role model. That's a better term. Yeah, role role model is a better term for that. I don't know. It depends. Do you want girls to be able to make their own decisions? She's pretty submissive. I mean, I I don't. No. <laughs> I thought you wanted. <laughs> no, I, in all seriousness, I can't imagine being a mother and being very happy about my daughter idolizing this character. Okay, so let's let's take a look at some of the stuff that Bella does. Like she she's completely and totally submissive to Edward. He is borderline psychologically abusive <laughs> to her. He plays all these mind games. I want you, I don't want you, stay back, stay away. How is close. that how is that borderline? That's blatant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh Yeah, he, he stalks her. He stalks her. He watches her while he, she sleeps. He's pretty much a creep. Edward's a, a bit of a creeper, I thought. And But no, so Ed, Edward tells her, I've been watching you sleep for months. She loves that. And, yeah, and instead of being like terrified and running, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, oh, that's, a, that's so cute. Hey, listen, if a very attractive girl came into my room and told me she's been watching me sleep for months, I don't care how hot she is. I would be upset by that. And I'm a guy. It's, it's, it's Unless she was, un, unless it was China from the WWF or whatever, I feel like I could probably take most women. Yeah. And so like, it's not like a physical thing where I'm scared of her. That's just very creepy. Yeah, that is, that's very strange behavior. Not normal. It's psychotic behavior, right? <laughs> Yeah, I would say so. I, I thought it was pretty weird. Because he's climbing up into her second, he's climbing up into the second story of her house, climbing into her window and just staring at her for eight hours a night. He's like, a <laughs> <laughs> no, think about it. He's staring at her for eight hours. I can't even stare at something for eight minutes. He's like a more psychotic version of Sam from Clarissa Explains It All. <laughs> he, appears in the, uh, he appears in the house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, Bella. I'm gonna say that no, uh, little girls, because this is a book. Well, this is this is a series for like 12 year old girls. Right, that's the the audience, and yeah, Bella is not someone. It's okay, they're not impressionable. Oh no, not at all. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Bella's a pretty good role model for anybody. Okay, so now here, here here's a pretty interesting question. Can we both agree Edward's dead? Right, he's dead. He's undead. He's he's undead, but he's still dead, right? Uh, I don't know, Joel. He's moving. He's communicating. Whether he's talking, he's moving around. He's but undead. I'm, what I'm trying to ask here. Is Bella a necrophiliac? Ooh, man. Yes or no? Serious question. She, his body is the same temperature as his environment. It's as cold as ice. Well, no, it's he's like a reptile. It's as cold. It's the same temperature as the environment. He's oh, in. Well, I mean, there's that scene where like they the Washington them, State is cold, so he's like, cold. Bella and Edward touch fingertips, and she goes like, oh, she flies backwards. Like your hands are as cold as ice. Like who would want to have sex with that? A frozen corpse. I can't relate to that, Joel. I don't know. I don't know how to answer this question. <laughs> Now let's let's uh, let's move on to Edward and the rest of the Cullen clan. Right? There's some really interesting things. By the way, that's a great that. word for it because it's really it's not a family. They're really more of a clan. Yeah, they are. I want. There's a lot of things I want to talk about. Edward. We already we already touched that he's a bit of a creeper. No, he's a, he's an enormous creeper. He's not a bit of a creeper. <laughs> he stares at someone eight hours a night for months. <laughs> Edward was bitten in the, in 1910. 1912. Okay. So he's a really old man. Really old. So his body is arrested. He is a perpetual 17-year-old. He's like 120-something years old. Okay. So doesn't his mind evolve? I can go into the biology of how a, pers- a, a man's brain doesn't fully isn't fully developed till the age of 26 or 27. But I feel like that point is moot because emotionally and experience wise, he's gone through so much. He should be well above and beyond these high schoolers that he's dealing with. He is. And it shows in the movie. He's, he's a sophisticated guy. You know, he's he listening to things. classical music. Yeah. 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 He's a man. Let's just, let, let's just get this out in the open. He's a grown man trapped in a 17 year old body. It's is not that even fair? that he's, he's not even, a, it's not even that he's a grown man because there are 40 year old men that still act very immature and it's not really till they're in their 60s or oh, that's, plus that, that they, way past that that they have the life experience where, where they've raised children, they've seen their friends die, okay. all these life experiences. He's had all that. He's, he's seen his friends die. He's experienced people grow old in front of them. He's gone through all these life experiences that Bella cannot even come close to comprehending. No. <laughs> Nowhere near <laughs> comprehending. Yeah. But somehow he falls in love with a 17-year-old. Yeah, I would I would think that he would want to go for an older woman, like something more experienced, something that I can actually keep up with him intellectually. Well, what I'm, what I'm trying to get at here is, uh, so if Bella is a necrophiliac, is Edward a pedophile? 
Listen, I'm not Dr. Drew. What do you think? Is it appropriate for a 170-year-old uh, man? If Bella falls in love with a dead man, I feel like that's open <laughs> game for a pedophile. <laughs> and everyone knows how we feel about pedophilia on this show. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So that, that's the least of her worries, right? That the fact that he's <laughs> he's 200 years old or whatever. 120, whatever. Yeah, well, who cares? Okay, so he's a really old man dating a high schooler, right? He's robbing the cradle. Point. She's robbing the grave. Ex oh, literally. So they make a really big point in this movie that Edward and the rest of the Cullens must maintain a low profile in order to survive in our modern day world. This literally goes out the window in the first 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> so I don't even know why they even made that statement to begin with. I just want to dissect that a little bit. Yeah, please. Okay, so... They're all teens. All, like the most, most of the Cullen clan are like they're young. They're youngish people. I mean, young enough that they go the one that come, over and over again. The one that rolls up in the Hummer that's holding onto the roll bar like he's ex-military. He looks like he's twenty eight or twenty nine years old. He looks like he works at I don't know. Yeah, exactly. He but looks just, like a bouncer at a bar. Just like you know, Luke Perry was thirty seven years old in Beverly Hills nine hundred two and or whatever. Like you know, they 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 always do you older people for high school. But my point is, they're supposed to be teens, right? Let's let's not even get into the issue of like their dad Carlisle just biting teens all day long and, and making a family out of them. Like that's a whole separate issue that we could. I feel like that's kind of sweet. Yeah. Okay. They have to keep a low profile. That this is so important. We cannot be discovered by normal humans. So what do the Cullen clan do? They wear the finest <laughs> fashions from Milan. They drive, drive up the in fastest force cars from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> they drive up in Hummers, violate every traffic rule imaginable by, let's stop at not buckling your safety belt, but hanging on the outside of a Hummer, while holding driving onto the into roll the roll cage while lot. you're skidding into the parking space. <laughs> Like you're holding a machine gun driving through a third world country on the back of a Humvee. You know, and not just that, but it's like they're, they're breaking one of man's greatest laws, incest, and they're dating each other. The Cullen kids are openly dating each other. Not just that, but people are discussing it like it's no big deal. Like Anna Kendrick is in there and she's like, oh, and they're dating and whatever. You know, she doesn't care. They're dating like Mr. Cullen. He's some kind of super secret family matchmaker, man. Yeah, they're supposed to be foster kids and no one bats an eye that they're walking around holding hands and kissing or whatever. They really don't seem to hey, care about hey, the profile here's, thing. Hey, here's a good question. They are in the cafeteria every day, no doubt, right? Are they eating? That's a really good point. Well, did, did, no, does any, is, is anybody wondering like, hey, they're not eating any food. Ever. I've never seen them ever eat. <laughs> That's a little strange. Yeah. Aren't you guys hungry? Like, I guess not. No, but we disappear for days on end and then come back. No one questions it. No, no one. No one cares. I also like how he, <laughs> I also like how in different instances, Edward will totally break the character of a son. And just come out and call his dad Carlisle. He's like, what's going on, Carlisle? Oh, yeah, that, that's right. <laughs> what's up? What's up, Carlisle? He's like, hello, <laughs> hello, Edward. <laughs> yeah, he calls his dad by his first name in front of everybody. Like, all right. Great no one, no one, no one brings it up. No one even says anything about it. They're they're in a large group. He's like, "What's going on, Carlisle? What's up, bro?" The, the whole premise of keeping a low profile just goes out the window completely and totally. Now, here, now here's a very interesting question. I I, I just kind of I did a little bit of research on Twilight before we started this, and there's a lot. Of, there seems to be a lot of hate. And here's a pretty random quote. I thought, and I thought it was pretty funny. And it's a pretty good question. How can the Cullens go to school and not kill anyone with all those teenage girls constantly being on their periods? Can't they smell the blood all the time? I remember uh, I saw the second one. And uh, Jasper, I believe his name is. That's uh, Green's, Ashley Green's yeah. boyfriend in the movie. Bella cuts her finger. Yeah, like a like, like little he, paper cut. Little paper cut. He flips out and almost kills her and it takes the rest of the family to restrain him. Okay, so yeah, your question is completely valid. <laughs> How come he's not going around killing everyone? Everyone. Yeah, because he in when Bella first meets Edward, like there's a fan behind her and it blows her scent on Edward and he and he's like he goes so like hog murderous wild, right? Yeah, his fangs pop out and he has to cover them up with his hand. <laughs> like you think that would happen all the time. Supposedly. At least more more often than not. I mean if they're if they've graduated high school over and over and over and over again, is this really the first time this has happened? Listen, if I was a vampire trying to keep a low profile, I would not send my kids to high school. How, like, what is what is the proper response for that? How would you respond to that? I, I, I don't know. I would I would keep them away from people, wouldn't it, you? Yeah, is, is that just to keep them, like, sane? To give them something to do? That's ridiculous. Because, I, to be completely honest, 
all of them could pass for being over the age of 18. So they could all say, I already graduated from high school. They, they obviously the don't jobs. have, they obviously don't have trouble. Get a job, right? Yeah. Get a, get a fucking job. They obviously don't have trouble faking documents because they fake documents every time they move to get into high school. I don't know how the hell Carlisle is a doctor. I'm really curious to know if he has to continually refine his training as a doctor since tech medical techniques have advanced so much since the Spanish yeah. influenza <laughs> of 1912. Okay, so... The Cullen family lives in a five million dollar mansion. They look like they live in a house that Frank Lloyd Wright like designed. You know. Yeah, there's a waterfall flowing underneath it, and the way they enter the house is by jumping forty feet into the air through the fifth story window of their giant seven story mansion. Low profile, man. Low profile. Yeah, so that that's that's uh, Bella and the Cullens. You know, there's 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 some minor issues with these characters. I think They're very minor, <laughs> very minor issues. Okay, well, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this movie. So let's let's just jump right into it. So what do you what do you think of that scene where Edward first showed off his vampire powers? Bella was about to get hit by a van, and then Edward like teleports across the parking lot and stops it cold with his hand, and it creates this huge indentation in the car. Uh, in the van and in Bella's car because he uses that to brace the other car. Okay. So, okay. There are a lot of flaws at that scene. I mean, I don't understand how nobody else picked up on that. No one saw it. No, no one, one saw it except no one. Bella. After the accident, the camera cuts to the crowd and there's at least 50 people all gathered around watching. They already called 911. No, <laughs> no one saw it. Not even the driver saw it. Which is weird because the driver pops out of the passenger <laughs> seat and goes, sorry, I couldn't hit the brake. It's like maybe if you were in the driver's seat, it would have been a little better. But what was really strange to me was there might as well have been a handprint on the side of the car <laughs> the way he stopped it. It's like, how'd the car stop? Well, I don't know. There's a handprint on the side of it. Bell is real strong. Here's a pretty big question for you. This is, this, is, this is a legitimate, serious question that I had while I was watching this. Why are these two even in love at all? You know, that's, that's interesting because the love scene, he pretty much tells her that everything about him is designed to make you love him. Yeah. Chem- chemically as a predator. So she's just being manipulated into this. But like, she's like okay. She, yeah, thing. but she, as far as true love is concerned, does that, that doesn't even cross her mind. I can understand if she's chemically attracted to him. Biologically, she loves him. But as far as like human beings are concerned, we're supposed to have higher brain functioning where we can reason and logic things out. Is she incapable of that? Did she ever, like, I don't remember. Did she ever say, because you, you know, if you ask a real woman, why do you like your boyfriend? She'll tell you something like, he's funny, he's smart. Th- things like that, you know, like real personality traits. At, w- at any point in the movie, did she ever say that? No. The only reason she likes him is because he's hot, right? That's it. It's all purely physical. He's a vampire. That's it. And he's mysterious. And, and, th- and then there's that scene where he reveals herself and goes on like a, a rampage, ripping up the forest and just like tearing things apart. He He's like, I wanted to kill you from the moment I met you. Any other person would have ran screaming into the night. But Bella's like, ah. Yeah, she I never wanted less. to drink anyone's blood more than you, Bella. Bella's response is, kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is 100% accurate to what happens. Yeah, like, I don't get this romance. Like, I, I don't understand their motivation. Like, it didn't seem very realistic to me. Well, I guess, I don't know. Is that supposed to be, like, mir- mirroring, like, a high school romance? Like, that kind of a thing? It's just purely chemical? If that was the case, why is Edward involved in it? He's too old for this BS? Or, I don't know, maybe he's surrounded by high school students all day and he just gets trapped in that developmental stage of high school. Do you find Kristen Stewart attractive? If you were in high school, would you... Are we going, we're going to the hot or not section? Not not yet. I just got a question. Do I personally find Kristen Stewart attractive? Like, let's say you were in high school and a girl named Bella Swan came in and it was Kristen Stewart. She was an actress. Would everybody flock to her at your high school? At, at high school? In, in high school, I was attracted to everybody. So probably, yes. But probably here too. I, I She's very attractive. I, I mean, in comparison to normal high school students, I think yeah. if she showed up in high school, mm-hmm. I think everybody at my high school would have done the same thing. But would would there have been that, that huge reaction? I don't think so. Probably not, no. They made all her friends uglier than her, though. They cast them all to be less attractive. Uh, oh, that's a that's a controversial comment. I know you that like. I I know you like the girl with the with the glasses. Yeah, on. her 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 friend with the glasses. I thought she was really cute. And Anna Kendrick is definitely cuter than Kristen Stewart. Ashley Green is by far the most attractive girl in this movie. There is no doubt in my mind. Ashley Green is outrageously attractive. She is the number one hottest person in this this whole thing. That being said, she played um, Alice. By the way. Okay, Joel. As far as vampire lore is concerned, there are a lot of differences in this movie from what is traditionally accepted as vampiric powers and vampiric behavior. This uh, movie plays really fast and loose with the typical vampire stuff. (laughs) Fast and loose is a 
enormous understatement. All right, so I know that I feel like it was inevitable. I was going to bring this up. If I didn't bring it up, you definitely were going to. Glittering skin. What do you think about it? What do you think I think about it? I think it's like really dumb. I hate the idea of vampires being able to walk in the daylight. That's just stupid. Unless they're Blade. Yeah, I mean, Blade can do it. But, you know, well, no, no, he's he's the day walker. Yeah. Well, he's one in a million. You know, I don't I don't want these Cullens doing it. My biggest problem, like, first of all, I I just hate vampires altogether. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're they're, they're dumb. Bite your forked tongue between your teeth. My problem with vampires is that, like, to me personally, like a vampire should be portrayed as what they are. They're monsters. You know, they are they're parasites. They feed on blood. They kill people all the time. But they part are of monsters. Their- I don't care about that romantic bullshit allure garbage. That's they part are- of their identity. That's how they attract their victims. Yeah, whatever. They're beasts. They should be portrayed as just like ruthless murdering killers. That's what I want. Thirty Days a Night came pretty close to that. That's what I like. I want that kind of. A vampire this whole bullshit of, of a vampire dancing at the debutante ball you know in a tuxedo <sighs> get that out of here i don't want anything to when do is that. a vampire dancing at the debutante ball save <laughs> like save true blood, blood i guess besides it so i'm a yeah, vampire you know, that garbage yeah but so, besides that so i hate and, and another thing i hate about vampires is that vampires especially these vampires are wildly overpowered they have too much power. It's like Superman. In comparison to Dracula? Like, compared to, like, like a Superman. Superman is way too powerful, but even he has a weakness. You could kill Superman if you knew what to do. These guys, you take, like, every vampire, you put them in the sunlight, they die. That's what you're supposed to have. In Twilight, no, they took away that, they took that away from them. So, what the hell is their main weakness? They don't have one, really. Do they? You have to, de- I mean, according to this movie, when you see them kill the, the bad vampire that's chasing Bella... What do they do? They twist his head off and then burn him? They burn him. Yeah, they no, burn they him twist off. his head off first. Yeah, okay. So you have to decapitate and then burn. Okay. That is a really involved uh, yeah, process really for involved. someone that can essentially run yeah, a thousand they, miles an hour, can rip buildings apart, and can jump a thousand feet in the air. They're way too overpowered. They're like gods. Okay, super strong, super fast. Some of them are telepathic. Other ones can see into the future. Oh, okay, what what else is there? Like that's that's so much. It's way too much. You know what I don't understand? Why do they have to keep a low profile if they're that overpowered? Who gives a fuck? Oh, they should just rule the world. They obviously can. I figure the reason that they don't, because ruling the world is a real big pain in the ass. Like, it's just a lot of work. So why why bother? So you're saying vampires are lazy? They're lazy. (laughs) So yeah, that's that's, that's my take on it. I I, I hate vampires. They're too strong. They're too ridiculous. It has nothing to do with ruling the world. They just don't have to keep a low profile. Like, if somebody has a problem with them, what are they going to do? Hunt them down? It's not going to work. The people would eventually just give up. Hmm. I mean, that might not work for the Cullens because they don't want to kill people, but... From what I understand, the rest of the vampires don't really give a shit. Well, there, well, there you go. That that's that is my take on the vampire. I know you're in love, you're head over heels with vampires, but is there a Van Helsing like thing of the Twilight universe? That's a really good question. There's got to be know. vampire hunters because there's vampires. There can't know. be one without the other. I don't know. Th- what, what I just said about vampires being overpowered. That's why I think True Blood is a piece of shit show as well. Like there's no checks and balances. Like they're just at like, the top of the food chain. That's stupid. You just said that you were upset that they don't that they don't die in sunlight, but. Why did they make them glitter? I really don't get that. What was the purpose of that? To make them fabulous? To make them fabulous. I guess to make them prettier, because we had that whole scene where Bella sees Edward glowing in the sunlight. He's not glowing. He's not glowing. He's glittering. glittering. And she goes, you're beautiful. His skin's bedazzled. Yeah, so I guess that's all part of the wish fulfillment power fantasy, I guess. See, like, I, I don't know if I buy that. Stephanie Myers wants her man to be bedazzled. She wants her man to be fabulous. Okay, I got something we can talk about. How about that vampire baseball scene? Oh, man. We're gonna jump right into that scene? Yeah, what'd you think? Describe that. There was a lot of lightning and thunder and jumping on trees and super... I, Bella was the umpire yet. I don't know how she could actually see yeah, what they were doing yeah, since Bella, they're <laughs> moving at like a thousand miles an hour. Bella and the Cullens play baseball in one of the scenes. That's a really good point. These guys are throwing fastballs at the speed of light. <laughs> how is Bella able to judge if it's a strike? How, why, <laughs> like, why is she even the umpire? Like, if she got hit by a fly ball, like, her, her skull would explode. <laughs> 
<laughs> I I guess they just wanted to f- make her feel like she was included. Yeah, you're part of the family now for some reason. You've been dating Edward for two weeks. Okay, so, all right, they, they can only play baseball during a thunderstorm, even though they're in the middle of nowhere in the woods. I don't know how anyone else is hearing them hit these baseballs sound like thunder, but only during a thunderstorm. In the middle of a field, which I think is pretty dangerous. For Bella, not for them, because they're vampires. Like it's not like they're gonna die from a lightning strike. That whole but... scene seemed kind of pointless to me. Very gratuitous. Just no, like... it allowed the bad guys to float in. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, these villains are the stupidest villains I've seen in a long time. Like I don't get. There's technically there's only really one villain of the three of them. The, the other two are just behaving like normal vampires. They were killing people and eating them. So okay, I actually can't even. I don't dislike them as villains. No, I'm not. I'm not going to fault them because they, you know, they're they're just doing what they're meant to do. Like, eat like, people. like, like as a. Uh, I like the one guy with the dreads. I thought he was cool. I he I, was. He was behaving like a rational, yeah, individual. He wants to survive, and he's like, they're going around feeding. But the other one, James, I don't understand this guy's motivation whatsoever. Like like a switch was flicked and he was like, I'm going to murder Bella. I'm going (laughs) to no matter what, no matter even if I have to fight off seven other equally powerful and more powerful vampires than myself. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to murder this one girl because I smelled her hair in a baseball game. Despite the the fact that there's a million other girls all over the place, you know, easy pickings everywhere else. I'm going to murder this one girl. He follows her across the country. He tracks her. I guess he runs on foot from Washington State to Arizona. Like, I I just, I didn't get it. Like, when I remember when I was watching it, it was around this point. Like, like I said before, I really tried to give this movie a fair shake. It was around this point that I, I, I hit the downward spiral and I was like, I just couldn't wait for it to end. Like, uh, At one point, you almost fell asleep, I think. Yeah, I was just leaning back. I was like, oh, eh, get it over with. Whatever, I don't care. I know nothing's bad is going to happen to anybody. Just end this thing. But Bella broke her leg. Yeah, she broke her leg, so what? She had to wear a cast at prom, Joel. Do you know how traumatizing that is? Yeah, prom is the most important night of a girl's life. Okay, so let's see what the real critics have to say about this movie. Kirk Honeycutt from The Hollywood Reporter calls it an underwhelming vampire romance, long on camp, but short on emotional insight. Michael Phillips of the Chicago Tribune says, low-key is not the adjective you'd expect to describe a highly anticipated vampire movie. But there it is. Ben Lyons from At The Movies says, unfortunately, it just didn't work. And Dave Fucher of Edge Boston says, Put simply, it lacks fangs. Nice. Didn't it didn't Good have job. a job. You know Good what though? Job. But you know what? His criticism had bite. Wow. Thank you. Okay, Martin. This movie currently holds a fifty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Do you think it's that? Is it really that bad? Absolutely. I give it a two out of five. The acting was poor. The story was non-existent. Well, I shouldn't say it's non-existent. It just doesn't make any sense. Other than the acting being poor, the story not making sense, and the overall special effects that could have maybe pumped it up a little bit for me and made it just visually pleasing for me to watch, really shit the bed. It looked like they used sci-fi channel CG techniques to make them look like they're moving fast. That just killed it for me, man. Okay, as for me, is it really that bad? Yeah, I'm going to agree. Yes, it's that bad. Like I said before, I really... Didn't I really wasn't gunning for this movie, but man, it was just a downward spiral from the very beginning for me. I don't like this movie. It is really that bad. I'm going to go with a two out of five. I thought it was boring. I thought it was dull. I didn't understand the motivations of the characters. And worst of all, I, I didn't care about anything that was going on. It just didn't make sense. It didn't make any sense at all. Yeah, suck it, Twilight. Okay, great. If you agreed or disagreed with anything we had to say, please send us an email. We definitely want to hear from you, especially in a topic like this. We absolutely want to hear what you have to say. Also, if you have any suggestions for movies that you've seen that you think are absolutely horrible, let us know. Or if there's a movie that you love, but everybody else hates, we want to know about it too. Send us an email with a suggestion and we might review it on the show. We've already received a bunch of great ones. So a big shout out to Alexander, Tara, Marlene, and Mackie from the Bad Movie Friends podcast at www.bmffriends.com. Thanks for the suggestions, guys. You can reach us at yeahitsthatbad at gmail.com. 
Or you can reach us at www.yeahitsthatbad.com. There's a very easy to use contact form on the page. You can send us your suggestions from there. If you like what you heard, please, please, please leave us a positive review on iTunes. Those reviews are extremely important because that's how fine people like yourself find out about podcasts like ours. We really could use the help. Also, if you really want to help us out, head on over to our website at www.yadstatbad.com. If you like the show, hit the like button for Facebook. That automatically tells all your friends about the show, and it helps to give us a little more exposure. There's just two more things I want to bring up. Our show was recently picked up by iTunes to be listed in the new and noteworthy section. So first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to Apple for that. That means a lot to me. But most of all, I want to thank you, the listener, for taking a chance at such a random show. If you like what you heard, please consider subscribing. And finally, the next movie we shall be reviewing is Lost in Space, starring Matt LeBlanc, William Hurt, and Gary Oldman. I already recorded this episode two or three weeks ago, so I know it's great. So keep a lookout for that, and I'll see you then. I wrote down as acting is pee pee doo doo poor in that in that scene. It is it is really bad. It doesn't convince me that he's angry in any way. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There are two scenes in the movie where the bad acting really stands out, and that's Edward's worst scene for sure. That is by far the worst scene. And the worst is that the other for for Kristen Stewart at the very end when she's in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Bella, are you okay? Oh, no, huh? What? Huh? Oh, what? What? No, huh? Oh, oh. No, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my best interpretation of what she had to say. 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 Interpretation of what she had to say.